Buonasera a tutti, good evening and welcome to the Italian Radio Hour. Io sono Viviana and I would like to welcome back our regular listeners and also welcome any new listeners. Also be sure to like us on Instagram and Facebook at Italian Radio Hour and subscribe to our YouTube channel to catch up on any past video interviews. Vorrei dare il benvenuto ai nostri ascoltatori da tutto il mondo, grazie per essere con noi anche oggi mentre continuiamo il nostro viaggio per l'Italia e la cultura italiana. So often I'm asked if I could have a time machine, uh, what period would I want to go back to? And then today the answer is going to be in the 1950s. So today will me, um, I will be joined by Max Tucci, who is going to take us in the world of one of the finest, the first fine dining restaurant in the country. And uh, we're talking about the Delmonicas. So, so from the 1827 to the 1980s, Delmonicas led New York's uh, restaurant scene visited by royalty and celebrities and uh, socialties, presidents of the United States, business tycoons, you name it, they were all there. And now one of the grandsons um, and uh, Max um, indeed is going to tell us about in his book, uh, how he recreated that area, uh, that era in New York, and uh, um, share with us in his book, The Delmonico Way, sublime, entertaining, legendary recipes from the restaurant that made New York. But stay tuned because we have a little pubblicità. Parli italiano? Do you want to learn, improve, or master your Italian? Istituto Mondo Italiano can help. Located in the heart of Regent Square, Mondo Italiano offers small group classes and one on one private tutoring in person or online to help you learn Italian in no time. Visit us online at www.istitutomondoitaliano.org. Benvenuto Max, how are you today? Ciao, buonasera, benvenuto, grazie. Welcome to the Domonaco Way, right? And welcome to here, Viviana. Thank you so much for having me on to this evening. Well, it's so exciting because, you know, for someone that was not born here in the United States, this is a name that I heard so many times. And uh, when your book came out, I, you know, got really, really curious to learn about um, your your family, the Tucci family, and we will uh, establish the connection with uh, the regional owners, the Dalmonicas. But uh, when I got the, the book, I was even more enthralled because of the layout, the pictures, and it's a combination of food history, family stories, and gossips. Because, you know, I read, you know, Mario, your father, he was quite of the entertainer and the gentleman, you know, the, the most eligible bachelor for quite some time, right? And uh, um, so it's a recipe book that has a soul. And what I really, really like, which I think is also the principle that um, guided you to put together this beautiful uh, publication, is how you connect the past with, you honor the past uh, in order to move forward. And uh, sometimes we see people just thinking about the future and not really looking back. What was it done? How was it done? How can we replicate and improve? Um, and you catch that. You you really, this is this is a spirit that I think leads uh, leads your pen through through the pages. But anyway, let's start with uh, back 1827. Who were the Delmonicas and what type of establishment did they initially um, um, open? Fantastic question. So, you know, my quote really for the new Delmonicos, because, you know, I'm the third generation partner, I'm the global brand officer. But for me, this new era of Delmonicos is moving forward while looking back, mm -hmm. right? And when we move forward and we look back, we look back at the ancestors, right? And we start with the Delmonico family. They were Swiss Italian immigrants, came to America. 1827, they created what was the uh, a small confectionery, like a chocolate shop down in, now today we call it the financial district on William Street. And they really had a passion for the hospitality industry. And so the confectionery grew, became a restaurant, and by 1837, it became known as America's first fine dining restaurant, brought to you by the Delmonico Brothers at 56 Beaver Street, Manhattan, New York. And since that time and since that date, New York has celebrated Delmonico's. 
right? And so the Delmonico brothers really, they understood, again, hospitality, conviviality. They understood society. And remember, they also understood expansion, right? And so it was really like the first chain uh, fine dining. Delmonico spread throughout the city. So yes, the financial district, which we call today Bowling Green, but also we had Fifth Avenue. And then there was, you know, the throughout the city, there were so many Delmonicos that mm -hmm. the Delmonico family operated and owned. So really, when we look at what they brought to America and to American dining, they introduced the tablecloth to the table. They introduced the menu to the table. They introduced recipes like lobster Newburgh, baked Alaska, the Delmonico steak, Delmonico potatoes, and the list goes on and on, right? So you can read more in the book, The Delmonico Way. But one thing that I love to discuss that on April 20th, 1868, was the first time that women were allowed to dine unaccompanied by men. Mm -hmm. And this is because really there was an event at Delmonico's. The women who were the journalists that came had to sit behind a curtain. They were not able to sit in the dining room alone, unaccompanied by a man. So this woman, Jane Crowley, was furious. She created this society. And then she went right down to the Delmonico brothers and said, we want to have our first ladies luncheon with this club that she created. Mm -hmm. So Delmonico's was the first restaurant to allow women in 1868 to dine by themselves, unaccompanied by a man. Mm -hmm. And the Delmonico history goes on and on. It's really a rich history in the culinary world in the Gilded Age. You know, today on HBO, we watch the Gilded Age. You hear about Delmonicos and the Vanderbilts and the Astors. So these this family, they were welcoming in so many wonderful uh, society families and royalty. And they really were creating a tradition. The chefs, Chef Charles Ranhofer, who had the first cookbook. And then we go back even further to Chef Filippini. They were really introducing such fine cuisine into the United States. Yes. And the family, you know, they ran this and they ran it well until about the 1900s. Mm -hmm. Right. And so why? They had the Delmonico farm. They expanded. They were spending a lot of money. They were also into gambling. They were also into wasting money. They were also into losing money. Mm -hmm. And then what happens by 1923, we have prohibition. Prohibition, yeah. Right? And so for the Delmonico brothers, this was it. They had extended it to other family members to operate it, but the well was running dry. Mm -hmm. And so by 1923, they shuttered all of the Delmonico brand. And that's where we insert the really Italiano from Firenze, <laughs> il mio, il mio nonno, Oscar Tucci, because mm -hmm. Oscar had a dream. He was, he had this, you know, the American dream uh, the sogno americano came dentro di cuore, right? Uh -huh. And he really wanted to be in the hospitality industry, yes. even though la mia nonna dice absolutamente no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and so by 1925, Oscar, who had been to America several times with my great grandfather, Oreste Tucci, he purchased the Delmonicos, the brand, the business, the location. And by 1926, was operating a smaller Delmonico restaurant upstairs and the famous speakeasy downstairs from 1926 to 1933. Yeah. Because Oscar, also, yeah, in the you building, know, you know, in addition to the restaurant, my understanding that the building was occupied by uh, lawyers uh, that had uh, the lawyers, uh, that had a penthouse. So the building itself was probably very interesting in addition to where the restaurant and well, the he was set up. Absolutely. The restaurant, keep in mind, when Delmonico's closed, the restaurant was shuttered. It was closed. Mm -hmm. But upstairs, there were offices, right? There, in the 1900s, there were offices for immigration, for ship insurance. It really was a, an office building until Oscar purchased it. Mm -hmm. And then throughout the many years of his ownership, he purchased the entire building mm -hmm. and he was creating the private dining rooms, Right. He it was the first we had the Casa Italiana for Columbia University galas mm -hmm. there. He had the penthouse that he created for celebrities and for businessmen to come. There was a bedroom, lavish fireplace, kitchen, butler, chef, and then the lower floors for the the Harvard Club, the Bull and Bear Club, the Roman Room. The Roman Room 
was very important because that's the room that Ciro Maccioni from Le Cirque, who got his first job at Delmonico's, he started as a busboy and then worked his way to a captain. And by the time Oscar, my father Mario, and my grandfather Oscar created the Roman room, Ciro Maccioni was the captain. And he was into inviting King Umberto. He was inviting the Onassis, uh, you know, and he was inviting all these really big um, celebrities and dignitaries to dine in the Roman room, Elizabeth Taylor. And so Sirio was in charge of them, you yeah. know, so it was really Italiani, tutti Italiani. Tutti Italiani. And actually, you mentioned, so there are a couple of things. Obviously, the 50s, that's where you have all these uh, celebrities and then we'll talk about maybe some of their um, requests like uh, the Marilyn Monroe and the grapefruit diet and, and the, uh, uh, but also you mentioned the Jackie Kennedy Onassis and I'm actually going to step forward because I would like then it ties in uh, directly to tell us a little bit about the cover um, because there is a, there is a common a common denominator, right? So who did this beautiful layout? And not only the layout outside, look inside. Um, and you'll tell me a little more about also these uh, these uh, uh, pictures here. But um, can you reveal who uh, kind of designed this? Um... Absolutely. Viviana, I love it. You've done your research on the Delmonico way. Amore, che fantastica. Allora, so the book was designed by a gentleman by the name of Roberto Di Victu Campich. And Roberto is a phenomenal book designer. He designed this book, which it's only published. And he was also, when he came to America, he was the assistant for Jackie Kennedy Onassis. Mm -hmm. So I really believe that her spirit was the one that introduced him to the book. Um, the inside, which we call the end pages, mm -hmm. right? These were the matchbooks that Roberto put together and wow. created this wonderful paper um, and design. And then the, throughout the pages of the Delmonico Way, you see the history of the building and the glamorous error that Roberto really, you know, tuned into. But this, um, this I turned also, I have to tell you a, a secret. I turned this into wallpaper so I'm going to have it put into the, the house. And also I have it printed on silk for the inside of my jackets, right? Oh, <laughs> and that's, somebody, that's the Delmonico way is taking, taking it that, one step yeah. further, right? Yeah. <laughs> so um, obviously the, the, the book is full of uh, uh, stories and personalities and personality traits and the recipes. And I do like it whenever I look into a cookbook, um, instead of just being a recipe book, is um it the recipes resonate more with me when there is a, a story or a family history behind because it shows some sort of authenticity and not just a nice picture taken for instagram or being published uh although we'll talk about your wonderful photography and uh so uh, by going through the pages that's how i feel that i'm projected um into being a you know um part of the Delmonico's experience throughout the pages. So let's talk about um, uh, some of the requests. You know, we mentioned before the Marilyn Monroe with the grapefruit. It was something that was going on in a certain time. <laughs> we're obsessed with grapefruits. <laughs> yes. You know, there was something called the grapefruit diet, right? Oh. Okay. And so my grandfather was always very in tune to what was happening mm -hmm. and also to honoring and um, serving his guests. Mm -hmm. You know, he was famous for saying all are welcomed at my table. So when Marilyn Monroe came in and she would be there often, you know, she loved and she caught on to this grapefruit diet and she would order the broiled grapefruit. And then, you know, you have a little honey or sugar and then you have the cherry in the center. But broiled grapefruit, you know, it's something that we don't really serve anymore today. Uh -huh. But it was something that was so popular. My grandmother, also, la, la mia nonna sesta bene forti tucci, she <laughs> loved this grapefruit diet, you yeah. know, and so she was saying, Oscar, you know, Oscar, you know, <laughs> we have to have this on the menu. And then also, you know, another recipe for me that's really one of my favorites was Marlena Dietrich. Mm -hmm. La mia zia Mary Tucci, my aunt Mary Tucci, who was really the iron fist with the lace glove of Delmonico's. She mm -hmm. was the first woman in finances in a restaurant. You know, she her love for New York was great, but her love for Firenze and for our family and for La Bella Italia was enormous, gigantic. 
<laughs> and so let's see, Mary, she was always writing in her diary these stories. So one of the stories she had written was when this Marlena Dietrich was in the movie Rancho Notorious, and she came in and she was saying to Latsia Mary, really, I would love to have Cherry's Jubilee. You know, the Cherry's Jubilee is so fantastic because Delmonico's then we would flambe it, you know, at the table side. A little bit of a showmanship. Uh, <laughs> so imagine, let's imagine, especially for you, because this is the area and the period that you want to be in, 1950s Delmonico's. And you walk in and Elizabeth Taylor is there and the Jackie Kennedy is there. And then really Marilyn Monroe or Elvis Presley, Cary Grant, right? Frank Sinatra, Cantina Renieri, right? Um, and we look into, and we're walking through Delmonico's and you see Mary Tucci sitting with Marlena Dietrich and they're flambeing these cherries jubilee, right? So just imagine the theatrics of Delmonico's and keep in mind that Oscar and Mario, they had music. The Ralph Burns Orchestra was playing, Catina Renieri was singing, you know, ciao, 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 or ti voglio tanto bene, or oh my love. Right. And so just imagine the atmosphere of mm -hmm. Delmonico's drinking, smoking, eating, laughing. And majority of people, especially my grandfather, speaking Italian with everybody. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's a beautiful it's a beautiful image. Uh, so talking about uh, I think it's your grandfather that had his uh, special way of making a Negroni. Uh, <laughs> so my <laughs> father, really it, stays it was, the family. <laughs> you know, it was really my father who. My father, when he was at Harry's Bar in Firenze, because we have the villa in Firenze, and I'll tell you, we're doing something fantastic with this, but I'll tell you later in the program. So my father fell in love with the Negroni, mm -hmm. right? He was at Harry's Bar in Firenze. We know the Negroni was originated in 1919 mm -hmm. at now what's called Giacosa in Firenze. And so by Count Negroni. So Mario Tucci brings the Negroni back to the United States, right? And he says, we have to serve this at Delmonico's. And so he prepares it. And then he loves to put it in a big glass, a balloon glass with big chunk, you know, robust ice. Uh -huh. And then he loves to pour it and degrade it and put every piece of orange, you know, like artistically and then top it with a vintage champagne, right? And so when he introduced this to, to the bar, you know, at Delmonico's, I mean, Consider the fact that the bar, we did a thousand lunches a day, wow. mm -hmm. a thousand lunches a day. And so my mother, Gina Tucci, loves to say, you know, that uh, Delmonico, since its existence, has served over 100 million cocktails. <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, maybe it's, uh, how about a cocktails book then? <laughs> Can Bravissima. We... Indeed, Can and I'm working on it now, <laughs> yes. <laughs> And so Rizzoli will be publishing it, and we have the cocktail book coming out. You know, I was trying for the end of this year, but with the opening of the restaurant of Delmonico's in September, you know, my time has been so occupied in so many wonderful ways, right? Mm -hmm. I'm definitely not complaining. I'm celebrating. And so it just pushes things slightly back, you know? And so the book now most likely will be in the in the early 2025, we will be we will be uh, nice and thirsty by then. So we will Fantastic. be will be wait. <laughs> so what are some of the signature dishes that also food wise? We talked about some of the um, beverages, so some of the drinks. But uh, when people think about uh, the monicals, so what are some of the signature di dishes that people? Of course. So one that everybody enjoys now, I believe globally, is the eggs Benedict, uh -huh. right? No matter where you go, there's an eggs benedict on a brunch menu, whether it's in Wisconsin or whether it's in Zurich, right? You can find an eggs benedict. And so the eggs benedict was one of the most famous dishes, also lobster Newburgh, mm -hmm. the delicious lobster Newburgh with the cognac and the sherry. And then if we go into also the Delmonico steak, which is the bone in ribeye, mm -hmm. and then we go into the Delmonico potatoes, and then we go into the wedge salad that my grandfather created in the 1930s at, you know, right in Delmonico's in, in the heart of New York City. And so, and today's wedge salad is fantastic because our chef, Chef Edward Hong is an incredible chef, has brought a twist to the wedge salad. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, you have to really come into the Monaco's to experience it. But um, the dishes that were created there really um, were so inventive 
and so perfectly timed and really created what we call the sublime entertaining and legendary recipes from the restaurant that made me your Delmonico's. Yes. So, so before, you know, we talked about, uh, you know, the, this, this restaurant being one of the uh, largest uh, restaurants uh, it's it's huge, you know. Now and and how it is divided because I believe there are different rooms and yeah. So Viviana, you must come to experience okay. it. We'll sit <laughs> down and have dinner <laughs> together. <laughs> okay. Bye. Okay. <laughs> so Delmonico's. Remember when my grandfather owned it, he owned the entire building. So he was operating like 65,000 square feet of restaurant space. But then he had it divided where the rooms were for the Lehman Brothers, for the Harvard Lunch Club, you for, um, you know, we mentioned these rooms before. Today, Delmonico's is 14,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. And it consists of two floors. And what I call the bar is a sotto mezzanine, right? You go down a couple of stairs to the bar. And behind the bar is the club room, which is a private dining room. The main dining room, which was used to be called the club room, the, the palm room. The palm room was the main dining room. Then behind the main dining room, we have the boardroom, which is a smaller private dining. Then downstairs, we have the, the wonderful private dining for the, the Dickens alcove. And this is the room where I was, you know, given more or less a book deal from Rizzoli, which we'll talk about. And then we have another room, which I call the speakeasy, mm -hmm. uh, which has a bar and which was the back door entrance to go downstairs to the to the restaurant. So there's a lot of wonderful, um, mysterious, yet cool rooms in the restaurant that really welcome all to the table. And no matter how big or small the party is, the Monaco's can accommodate. Yes. And uh, so another thing that, uh, you know, when we talk about all these uh, lavish uh, meals and personalities and everything, and then um, it might lead to the misconception that it was maybe an exclusive place, or maybe you inherited an easy path in life just because you were uh, linked to the uh, tradition. So let's actually go maybe address the first one that um, the the Monica's was an exclusive place, and I don't. I, I I got a feeling it was exactly the opposite, right? It, it, I mean, exclusive in the, in the sense, yeah, in the experience, uh, yeah. you know, the, but... exclusivity where you know reservation only, right? Mm -hmm. But Oscar welcomed all to the table, right? Mm -hmm. So we have to understand, yes, the celebrities were a big part, mm -hmm. but the businessmen and the women who dined, everybody was welcome except for one person, which I write in the book. Um, and so I like to say, if you want to know who that is, you have to read the book and then email me, right? Yeah. Or follow me on the Instagram at Max Tucci and DM me. But <laughs> yes, there was an exclusivity, but also keep in mind that during the dark hours when the restaurant was closed, my grandfather, Oscar, which my father continued the tradition set up a table for the homeless to come and dine who were living you know outside of the building and my grandfather was very much of the essence where if you help them you know they will in return help you mm -hmm. if, if we disregard people they will disregard us mm -hmm. and so oscar was very welcoming and you know he loved everyone who came to delmonico's that was just his nature mm -hmm. so yes the exclusivity was you know was was there but it was very welcoming and to think, you know, my grandfather, it's one thing to be in the restaurant industry, okay? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's so many restaurateurs in the world. But to be in the hospitality and the conviviality mm -hmm. aspect, where you're a friend, where we're not celebrating the chef today, we're celebrating you, mm -hmm. our client, is what Oscar did. And I think today the very big misconception that the hospitality and the restaurant world has is today people go in to celebrate the chef, the chef, the chef, but in return, it's really not about the chef. It's about everyone that shows up and the clients that show up to the restaurant. So Oscar honored everybody. So so like uh, the New York Daily News uh, headline when the book came out where Hollywood meets Wall Street and everyone is a star. <laughs> 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 I love it. You know, and to take it one step further, they say Max Tucci in the book recreates the era of lush luxuries, mm -hmm. right? And so lush luxuries and this recreation of an era took 15 years to do, mm -hmm. you know? And so it wasn't like, you know, oh, Max Tucci, the grandson of Oscar, the son of Mario, 
you know, and keep in mind everyone who came out of Delmonico's, Sirio Maccioni, Tony May, uh, from San Domenico and Paolo and Windows of the World and the Rainbow Room, Fedora Dorato, then Harry Panagopoulos, then Leilo Arpaia, Il Babbo di uh, Donatella. So many great came out of Delmonico's. Mm -hmm. So people have this misconception that because of this heritage that I have, this very rich Italian heritage, that things were given easily to me. Mm -hmm. And so in fact, uh, you know, 15 years if you had to uh yeah because uh, sometimes now to to get a, a book uh deal uh they uh the publishers look into you know some other uh you know the followers and here and there um and then uh but uh you had uh um, you know uh, you always taken um, rejections uh with uh, a great spirit uh, you always uh felt that a rejection this time might open up uh, the door to something bigger and better in uh, down down the road. And that's exactly what happened, which was a case of serendipity. But it was an event that you were hosting at uh, the restaurant for a very dear friend of yours who was launching her book. Uh, so can we talk about <clears throat> Whoopi Goldberg, uh, how she brought you luck in that way? Uh, Absolutely. Because she also honored your family very much and walked down. Grazie. Viviana, I love that you know all of these secrets of Delmonico's. So Whoopi Goldberg indeed loves Delmonico's. She wrote a book. You know, she now also has a house in Sardinia, so she's half Italian. <laughs> ah, non lo sapevo, okay. <laughs> yeah, you know, and she's in Italy all the time. So, you know, Whoopi had, has this affection for Delmonico's. Mm -hmm. And so when she wrote her book, The Unqualified Hostess, she writes about some of the tips at Delmonico's, you know, and how there were the linens on the table for the first time. But over the years, we've celebrated her birthday there. And so I phoned her and her manager, Tom, who also now lives, has a home in Italy. And I said, you know, we would love to do a book signing for you at Delmonico's. This was 2019. So Whoopi comes. We have this wonderful, wonderful party for the book, this release. And in walks Charles, who is the head of Rizzoli, New York. And in this, let's keep in mind, for the 15 years that I was working on this book, I had numerous dinners with publishers where they turned down the book. The numbers aren't enough. You don't have social media. Delmonico's this, Delmonico's that. It's, you know, it's the Gilded Age. It's so, been so talked about so many times. And so rejection. No, which I call the beautiful no, because in my life and in my belief, rejection is protection. And if somebody does not want you, I love to know at the beginning, because if they don't want me, then I need to know from the beginning, right? Mm -hmm. Because I take up space and I know what I want. So <laughs> fine. So now after all of these rejections and almost giving up, I almost gave up on this book. Um, I have a very dear friend of mine, Randy, um, who lives up in Connecticut. We were talking and he goes, how can you give up? You're so close. You have to do the book. So I walk into, uh, you know, so Charles walks into Delmonico's for this whoopee party and he's observing me, you know, and I'm really in the spirit of the Delmonico way of my father, of mio nonno Oscar, la mia sesta, la mia nonna sesta, la mia zia, you know, I'm really, really in the energy of this, you know, Tucci family in Delmonico's. This is the restaurant they worked in, they loved, they strived. And so Charles looks at me, he goes, why don't you have a book? And so I said, in all due respect, I said, that's because you have not published it. <laughs> and we'll take a meeting with you. And so, in fact, he took a meeting and, you know, he really wanted Delmonico's to be seen through my eyes. Mm -hmm. So this was really the first time that a publisher had said to me, we love the concept, but we want the stories of your family, of your Aunt Mary of your Nono Oscar, of your Babo Mario. So really come back with these stories. And I said, eh. he said, can you do that? I said, it will be my pleasure and it will be super easy because my Aunt Mary had this diary with all of these wonderful stories. Mm -hmm. But keep in mind, somebody who was really dear to me um, and we know her as La Bella Catina Renieri, Mm -hmm. The singer, the beautiful singer from Firenze, whose husband, Rizzo Ortolani, was the famous composer. And so I'm in Rome and I'm with Zia Catina and we're talking about the book. 
and she's giving me her stories of when she would sing with Liberace and when she would sing with this one and when she would be in the dresses right after the Oscars. She was the first Italian woman to ever perform at the Oscars in the 1960s. So naturally she flew back to New York and came to Delmonico's and she's singing her songs there. And so, you know, her husband, Rizzo Tolani, did Mondo Cane and did also all these other phenomenal F Fellini films. And Katina Renieri said, Max, you have to paint this picture of luxury, of what Delmonico's was. Picture me, she would say, in mio nipoto. Picture me, nipotino, <laughs> standing there in my dress, singing, right? The sensibility of the songs that Ritz wrote for me, oh, my love. Mm -hmm. And when she said those words, oh, my love, that was it. it. That was the form that, that's magic, what uh, formula. Mm -hmm. It's my love. It's my yeah. love. Mm -hmm. We're Italian, so we're very passionate. passionate. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to interrupt uh, that passion for just a few seconds, uh, just for some um, commercials here. So applying for it uh, Italian citizenship, need documents translation, Istituto Mondo Italiano provides certified translations and assistance services. Be sure to visit us at www.istitutomondoitaliano.org and schedule your free consultation. Un caffè per favore. My first cup of coffee sets the tone for my entire day and I get my coffee at La Prima Espresso. La Prima has been brewing Pittsburgh's best coffee for nearly 35 years. Try any of their in-house roasted varieties of beans from all, all over the world at home or come and enjoy an espresso or a cappuccino at any of their locations where their friendly baristas and familiar faces will make you feel at home. Visit laprima.com to get La Prima Espresso coffee at your door. Okay, so we, um, yes, so I, I think another way of putting it is that Rizzoli was, um, in the end result is the element of authenticity uh, yeah. that uh, makes your book stand out. Um, it's, it's not just a recipe book, it's just, uh, it's much, much more. You feel compelled to go through the pages and the recipes and the pictures. Uh, but there is also a food history in there. Um, mm -hmm. I believe there was also a key uh, person that helped you uh, keeping things um, uh, uh, accurate. Um, as far uh, would you uh, would you like to tell us a little bit? Absolutely. Ready to. Absolutely. And before we continue that, I just share with you the picture of Katina Renieri. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes, yes. <laughs> right. So, you know, look, Delmonico's has many books written about it, but many of them are inaccurate because of the dates. So mm -hmm. I worked with a woman by the name of Becky Diamond, who wrote a book um, called The Thousand Dollar Dinner, really about food history. She's a historian, a librarian. It was a phenomenal book, and it was about two restaurants, Delmonic was being one of them, and a restaurant in Philadelphia that were fighting in the 1800s to be really the first top chef for this wealthy gentleman, who in today's time would have spent $35,000 on the dinner. So Becky writes this book. I interview her on my show that I had Max and Friends, and we started a friendship. And I said, you know, Becky, I would love to have you help me with this book because she's really wonderful at research, at history, at organizing. I have such a vast um, uh, collection of memorabilia. So Becky came down, you know, to my house in Florida, and we were working together to really set the stage of everything that I had in these archives to make everything in the book accurate, factual, without any second doubt. And so unlike other books who give histories of Delmonico's with inaccuracies, the Delmonico way is the most accurate book for Delmonico's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Becky Diamond, who now wrote a book called The Gilded Age uh, mm -hmm. Cookbook, um, who is a wonderful, wonderful writer. And so she helped me tremendously with this book. Mm -hmm. And uh, so let's also put in perspective the timelines of when this book was in the works, when you finally got the green light, uh, you know, it's like we're moving forward because um, something happened called the pandemic, right? <laughs> and uh, so that probably imposed some um, uh, some issues uh, or uh, impediments because we're talking about collaborating. So people probably being in, in a... a uh, space, uh, food that, you know, it was not as easy to get the same material 
as uh, pre-pandemic. So tell us a little bit about the insights of making it work and uh, who did you choose for your photography that um, has done a beautiful job? <laughs> Thank you. And we just won an award, the Adavi Award for food photography. Yes. So, you know, the, the book really, my mother always said that it's only is the only publisher who can publish your book. And this was like 20 years ago, she said this, mm -hmm. right? And I found also that it's only did parties at Delmonico's. So when it's only finally gives to me the green light that we're doing the book, then we have pandemic. Mm -hmm. So I remember saying to my ancestors, whom I talk to every day, every morning I wake up, I say, buongiorno, nonno, Oscar, buongiorno, babbo, let's see, Mary. I really, I, I, I invoke the, the energy of my ancestors into my life every morning, mm -hmm. right? And so I meditate a lot. But I, in this moment, pandemic, I'm sitting by myself and I say, how is this possible? How is it that we finally have the green light? We have a book deal, something that I've been dreaming about my whole life. And now we're hitting a pause. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, when I really, I was saying, what now? And it was in that moment where that what now, and I can feel my ancestors saying, why not now? Mm -hmm. Now is the time. And I couldn't understand really what that meant. So when we were looking for photographers, there was interviewing, you know, many photographers. And one that I interviewed who, Jennifer um, Arce, who's a wonderful photographer, this was her first cookbook. And I'm interviewing her and I said to her, Jennifer, why is it that you want to be the photographer for this book? And she stopped and she said, it's always been my dream to do a cookbook. Mm -hmm. And it was in that moment that I stopped and I said to her, you are the photographer for this book. I said, I'm going to cancel the rest of the appointments today, the interviews, and you're the photographer. She starts crying. I start crying. And she's like, why? I said, because if this is your dream, I want you to dream bigger mm -hmm. because you're going to do this and you're going to give your all to it. Yeah. And so she really, really produced the most incredible, the most incredible images during a time, as you said, Viviana, this is pandemic. We couldn't get, you know, the Berkshire pork chops. I couldn't get lobster. And we're wearing these zip suits. Imagine in this big studio, zip suits and masks. And we have the, you know, the photographer, the assistants, and everyone's like, you know, 10 feet away from each other. It was the most bizarre, you know, it looked like a movie that we're filming. And yet we're shooting this book. So we did the best we could in the times. But I think that's something that also is very descriptive of Delmonico's. That mm -hmm. no matter what the challenge is, we must always rise to the occasion. Persevere. Yes, I think yeah. I, I can see that in the also in the Italian DNA, that perseverance. <laughs> <Bravo. laughs> so that's how we, you know, we created these wonderful, wonderful images. Mm -hmm. um, for the Delmonico way. So yeah, it was, it was quite a challenge, but I always say this every morning when I wake up, my mm -hmm. mantra is that I open myself up for offers, options, and opportunities for my highest good. And I'm willing to do the work. Mm -hmm. We must be willing to do the work like you do. You do these shows, but you do more than just the show. You're the interviewer, you're the researcher, you study who's coming on the show. Right. And so it's a passion and we have to do the work. And when we do the work, everything rises up, not only to meet us, but to congratulate us. Uh, so talking about uh, some other source of inspiration, um, um, tell us a little bit the story about the forward of, uh, of, of the book. I think that uh, that has also someone else that is coming to give you the words. Right. <laughs> Yeah, you're going to get me now emotional, but it's all part it's of authentic. the Authentic. Again, we're looking for authenticity. <laughs> so my publishers came to me with a list of people from Gail Green to um, Florence Fabrican to uh, wonderful writers, Ciro Maccioni, uh, you know, Tony May. And we were discussing who was going to do the forward of the book. Celebrities as well. And I had to really be still. And I had to think about who was going to do the forward of the book. And so I turned, you know, they said, what about this one? No, it just didn't feel right. This one, no. 
So I called my editor, Caitlin, who was wonderful. She's learning Italian. She loves tomatoes. She loves Italy. So I said, I have an idea. I said, it's going to be Oscar, my grandfather. And you know, no. And I remember her saying, I think this was the first time ever that she thinks someone who was already passed was doing the forward for a book. <laughs> and I said, but here you have to understand why. I found a letter from Oscar. Mm -hmm. And the letter was the forward to the book. Yeah. Right? And so in the book, there's a couple of things where I feel like my ancestors already have done the pages. In 1979, my Aunt Mary writes, Caro Babbo, for you and me to carry on the family name love oscar my first name is oscar after my nonno no. and it's on the florentine paper and i said we have to put this in the book and then i find the letter and my grandfather writes and i'll read the very condensed version of it which became the forward of the book at oscar's del monico i serve hundreds of lunches daily and grand galas and dinners it is my aim to please my loyal clientele and give them the highest quality food prepared in an appetizing manner in an elegant atmosphere. All are welcomed at my table. And Oscar said this in 1953, your error. And so when I wrote the dedication for the book, I said, I dedicate this book to the Tucci's. Oscar, Sesta, Mary, Mario, whose boundless love for Delmonico's was evident in their success. And to the two brilliant restaurateurs, Tony May and Sirio Maccioni, whose skills were honed at Delmonico's and who continued my family's tradition the Delmonico way. And to the reader, to Viviana, I dedicate this book to you with hopes that it will inspire you to celebrate life with elegance, grace, laughter, love, intentions in the spirit of the Delmonico way. Absolutely. It could not have been uh, said a better uh, better than, than this. Because indeed, you know, people use the expression la dolce vita, now we're going yeah. to start using the Delmonicus way, right? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there are some other things. That la Delmonico vita, così. So the, the other interesting, you know, I'm a business entrepreneur, so I always look at some business savvy, you know, how people did certain things uh, back in the day. And there were quite a, quite a few things that um, I think your, uh, your family was, uh, was first. And uh, um, the, the one about, um, um, you, I, I believe your, your family had a farm. So if they had a farm, some of the products that were um, served at the restaurant, you know, the, the, uh, we're coming directly uh, from uh, from from the farm with the first refrigerated vehicle in New York. Exactly, uh, that, that's a huge. That's huge. <laughs> so Oscar, he created. He had a, a, a car. There was a Ford that was uh, transformed really into a refrigerated vehicle because he would go to the local farms, not only in New York but Brooklyn and Bridgeport, Connecticut, mm -hmm. and he would find the vegetables, the produce, the meat for the day, and he would bring it back to the restaurant. He also had a printing press on the second floor, mm -hmm. right? So that he could print the new menus because every day the menu was changing. And so he was very, he was brilliant. And he was brilliant in not only in hospitality, but in 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 creating and in, you know, really being an inventor and really seeing the future of hospitality and food and how it was going to transform in America. He was bringing curry to the menu when no restaurants in New York, except for Indian restaurants, were bringing curry. Mm -hmm. Right. He was bringing, you know, the, the fantastic uh, polenta. <laughs> he was bringing the marvelous, you know, colo di gallo, ripieno con carne, ribolita. You know, he was bringing in all of these wonderful dishes, um, uh, pasta bolognese, things that Delmonico's was never a steakhouse. That's a big misconception. Mm -hmm. It was fine French dining. And then when Oscar took it over, it, you know, tra transformed. But um, today, you know, yes, it's a steak, but it's it's predominantly steak driven. But today, it's really, you know, still in the honor of the Delmonico's past and moving forward, looking back, where we still serve the wedge salad, lobster Newburgh, baked Alaska. Uh -huh. So I have probably two more questions and then and then a picture. The question is, obviously, you just talked about a, a printing press. So um, um, what, you know, you probably have a huge archive of material and notes and uh, menus and probably also special menus for uh, the royal you indicated some royal family members so 
um, I would love to peek into that archive, but I'm just asking you, are, are you, is there maybe a plan also to showcase some of that, you know, have the space maybe within the restaurant to showcase some of that material that... Um, yeah. So in the restaurant now at Delmonico's, which is 56 Beaver Street, and our Instagram there is at Delmonico's New York, um, we have pictures of the archives, some of the archives throughout the restaurant. So you can celebrate that. We have a curiosity cabinet with some of, you know, the the pictures and also some of the, the um, you know, we rang the bell for the reopening, the reimagining of Delmonico. So we have the medallion for that. So there is a history when you walk into Delmonico's. There's also a wonderful, we sell the book there. We have the cutting boards there. But there's also a picture that my father sketched. He was an illustrator that said, we don't care how you come to Delmonico's, but we do care how you leave. And so there's his sketch by the door. So when you walk through the restaurant, you really have the sense of getting to know the restaurant, the history, the family, the Tucci's, you know, the Delmonico's, the menus, the presidents that dine there, the celebrities that dine there from Gypsy Rose Lee to uh, Arlene Dahl and Virginia Graham. And so there's a beautiful history throughout the restaurant. But the archives you mentioned, you know, I have a menu that's printed on silk. That dates back to the royal family when they had an event, a uh, grand gala at Delmonico's. I have menus that are for, you know, um, Roberto Di Camarino, the, the designer Giuliana, when she had her party there. We have so many wonderful menus, um, not only calligraphy that were handwritten, but also printed in the restaurant. Mm -hmm. Uh, so then uh, I'm going to obviously, you know, um, not obviously, but, uh, you know, during the, the pandemic, um, uh, restaurants um, had uh, to close and then eventually there was the reopening of uh, of the restaurant and uh, let me see if I do have a, an image that I can share just one second and uh, tell us uh, the emotion of that uh, one um, one essence of who was there. And uh, so get us uh, while I'm trying to locate the, the, the picture. Uh, tell us, uh, make us... Uh, <laughs> Make us we do the setup. So the setup of Delmonico's. Yes, it was closed during pandemic. There were some legal issues also of the trademark of the licensing and figuring it all out. And if you're interested in that, it's a very low frequency conversation. So um, you know, it's you can find it in, in online. But this picture. This picture, Viviana, you know how to make me get emotional. <laughs> this is the size. This is my my mother, Gina Tucci, and <laughs> I love this photo so much. You know, my father died when I was eight years old, yes. and my mother really became the matriarch of the family. She was queen of Delmonico's, the queen of the family, and, you know, really it was just my mother, my sister, and I. And uh, my mother always taught us to really, you know, love the family and keep us all close. My mother is not Italian. She's Lithuanian. And she escaped during World War II and has a fascinating story, which I write about some in the book. But on this day in particular, it was a great victory for Delmonico's to reopen and to have the Tucci energy back in Delmonico's. And there's Dennis who's clapping and the mayor. Uh, Dennis is the partner with uh, with Delmonico's. And, you know, really, he's the head of the ship, the captain of the ship. Um mm -hmm. And Joe is in the picture. And, you know, I see our team there and the mayor and Mama Gina. So I was scheduled September 15 to go to Delmonico's, cut the ribbon and give some speech for the, re the reimagining, reopening of Delmonico's. Mm -hmm. As I'm going to go to this moment, the mayor comes there. My mother's standing next to me and he goes, who's this? I said, this is Mama Gina, <laughs> Mama Gina Tucci. <laughs> And he goes, well, I'm a mama's boy and your mama's cutting the ribbon. I said, with great pleasure. So I had just welcomed New York back to Delmonico's. I welcomed the world back to Delmonico's. And the mayor is standing there with my mother. He brings her up onto the steps. And my mother cuts the ribbon for the reopening of Delmonico's. <laughs> this moment is, for me, the most memorable, the most tangible the most, the memory that I can feel the most mm -hmm. because to witness, yes, my hard work and to, you know, Delmonico's, but to witness my mother who ran the restaurant, whose love for Delmonico's is evident, whose love for my father, my Aunt Mary, the family. And here she is really the last, the last of the originals. 
mm -hmm. standing there cutting the ribbon. You know, there's this song from the movie, The Color Purple, and it says, look what God has done. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, I said, look, not only what God has done, but what Oscar, Mary, Mario, and Sesta have done. And they brought us to this moment. Absolutely. And uh, also, you know, just uh, just to uh, conclude, uh, the Delmonicas was also part of, um, you know, many movies where they already talk about, you know, the the um, the dining experience at the restaurant. And uh, you kind of went on to a quest, I believe, to try to uh, document or maybe you even had a film festival that um, <laughs> uh that capture all the movies where the delmonicas was uh was was mentioned it's something that was a one-timer or um is viviana i love of... this question so when we look at delmonicas yes it's a brand that in really in 2027 will be 200 years old okay the restaurant a little bit younger right in 2037 will be 200 years old mm -hmm. so to continue the delmonico brand is one thing but to continue the legacy of the Delmonico way, mm -hmm. where it's really sublime entertaining and everything, taking everything, intentions, setting the table with intentions. So I created the Delmonico way in film because the Delmonico way in film talks about the movies Life with Father, Hello, Dolly, Girl with the Yellow Ribbon, The Associate, The Age of Innocence. And it's all the movies that mention Delmonicos. So I've created not only the Delmonico Way Film Festival, which we did at the uh, Bedford Playhouse, which is also the Clive Davis Playhouse in Bedford, New York. I will be doing another one and I'll be extending this uh, film festival because it teaches not only the history of Delmonico's, but also the film and how Hollywood and New York became one because of Delmonico's. But I've also extended it. And this is um, sharing with you is the Delmonico Way at Sea. So we will be doing the Delmonico Way cruise with Variety Cruises, a third generation cruise company, July 19th to the 26th in Athens. We depart from Athens and we will do a wonderful week on board of the, the Galileo ship and we'll do the Delmonico Way. So we'll have two dinners on board. And then this is really fantastic because I have the house in Firenze. Uh -huh. So I will be doing with Ace Travels, the Delmonico Way Tuscan Tours, Firenze through my eyes. Benissimo. Because at 16 months old, I grew, I was my first time in Firenze. And for me, going to Firenze, it's really the energy that I need because of, yes, the Medici family and all of this beautiful architecture and art in Firenze. But it's where my roots are. Mm -hmm. And so continuing the family, the Tucci family legacy, um, I had spoken to you earlier today and I said I was going to be a little bit late. Um, and the reason being, I'll give you uh, a, a quasi, uh, <laughs> a quasi, you know, uh, 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 report, um, mm -hmm. inside, inside tip. So just in a few months, I will be opening another restaurant in New York in honor of my family. Benito. Especially my fam, my father, Oscar, uh, my father, Mario Tucci. Fantastic. Well, that's a great, a great, a great announcement. Thank you. So for I'm giving you the that. first school. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I wasn't able to make it earlier because I was really invested. We're doing this very quick, Viviana. So maybe we'll keep in touch for sure. And um, maybe you can come to the opening of that. That would be fabulous. And uh, when you were talking about the DC experience, I remember reading in the book, but I don't remember if it was uh, uh, during prohibition or during a time where they were trying to, you know, your family was uh, was even sending out. Uh, uh, yeah. the boat. Uh, I mean, um, yeah, but one was the vehicles uh, initially, and then you had the whole fleet at that point. And uh, so, and then, yeah, and, yeah, so we like to say that my father and my grandfather created the first Uber because people were not coming downtown. So uh -huh. they had these Cadillacs they bought from Jack Grassi in Connecticut and they would drive people down to New York, you know, from the Upper East Side, Upper West Side, Midtown to Delmonico's. But my father also extended the Delmonico way at sea because he brought the boat, which was the Firebird. And he would do these dinners on the Hudson River. And you would go down by the Statue of Liberty with caviar, Negronis, you know, and you had this wonderful affair. But also, my grandfather used to write the menus, and not too many people know this story, but he used to write the menus for the SS Constitution when he would go from New York to Livorno, right? Mm -hmm. 
And so he did a lot, or from New York to Genoa, depending, La Spezia, you know, the, the port. And so he would do the menus, the Delmonico way at sea for the SS Constitution. So I'm continuing his legacy and my father's by doing this with Variety Cruises, mm -hmm. um, July 19th. And what's fabulous is they're smaller ships. Mm -hmm. So it's really only 50 people. Um, oh, and so we cool. can go into the ports and it's really luxury and, you know, there will be sublime entertaining at sea. And then the Delmonico Way Tuscan Tours with the Villa in Firenze, which is really only 10 minutes to the center. So you're not like, you know, in the middle of San Gimignano or Siena, you're right in the center of, of Florence, you know, 10 minutes. So the, the Tuscan Tours, those those we start in September and October of this month. And we run them, you know, for private villa rental uh, every week, Saturday to Saturday. Um, and then we'll do the villa rental throughout the year because, you know, the house for me to be able. I understand when Oscar said all are welcome to the table. You know, uh, the restaurant has to be celebrated. And this home, this villa that I have in Firenze really needs to be celebrated as well. You mm -hmm. know, and so it sits there and I hear it calling my name. And so we used to rent it many years ago. Goldie Hawn rented it, Eva LaRue from CSI Miami. So I feel we've, we have we stopped it for many years because we wanted to keep it private. But now I said, I, I love hospitality so much. I want to open up the, the right. villa. <laughs> well, unfortunately, our time together is uh, is up for this beautiful conversation. Big Ben ha detto stop. <laughs> it's time for us to say arrivederci e alla prossima. We want to thank you for tuning in into the program. If you have any questions or comments or if you have any topics you would like us to address, please contact us at the Italian Radio Hour at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you. And remember, if you or any of your family and friends have missed a prior episode or would like to listen to this episode again, subscribe to the Italian Radio Hour on YouTube or where you catch your favorite podcast. This has been such a, an amazing conversation with... Um, I feel calling you my friend, Max Tucci, because <laughs> let me through this beautiful, the Demonicus way, really uh, allow me to get a peek of uh, uh, of your family and the values of your family. So I Grazie. want to thank you again for your um, time and availability. We'd like to thank also our sponsors, Itali um, Istituto Mondo Italiano and Alla Prima Espresso. So until next time, alla prossima, ciao ciao. Grazie, ti voglio tanto bene. <ride> ciao Max, alla prossima. Ciao, ciao. ciao. Grazie.